Thank you, Chairperson, for kind introduction. First of all, I'd like to express my hearty thanks to the organizer, especially Bengt, for inviting me to such a wonderful workshop. The, the title of my talk is this, and to tell the truth, this title was presented by Bengt. <laughs> so today, um, I'm talking about uh, not much specific, but the, uh, a little bit more general according to the request of the organizer. The previously, IBM used supercomputer Deep Blue to play chess game with the world champion Kaspar. And finally, this computer won this game, but the computer consumed a large amount of energy. But how much energy did his brain consume? To estimate this energy, we have measured the temperature of the brain during the thinking by MRI, ML, MRS, with the accuracy of 0.1 degree. This shows the temperature distribution of the human brain during thinking. And then we found that that energy is only one watt. Of course, the human brain is a complex system. Human brain has a huge number of neurons, and the neural network has a huge number of synaptic connections. The number of the combination should be huge. So if this number of the combination is strictly calculated by computer, huge amount of energy is required, which is much larger than that of the millions of nuclear plants. But our brain consumes only one watt. So the question is, how does biological system so skillfully work with extremely low energy cost? We have studied this point at the molecular machine level, cellular level, and the human brain level. And today, I'm talking mainly about molecular machine. But if I, I have a time, I'd like to talk about the human brain quite briefly. The question is, how does Neymar's brain work to perform the brilliant sucker? Do you know Neymar? So this is Neymar in MRI. And this is the, his sign for me. OK, the uh, molecular machine. So we have studied the mechanism of protein molecular motors. The muscle contraction is caused by the relative sliding between actin and the myosin filament at the molecular level, like this. First, we try to observe the single actin filament. But the diameter of the actin filament is only seven nanometer, which is too small to be observed in aqueous solution. So we have used fluorescence microscopy equipped with laser and high sensitivity camera to visualize a single actin filament labeled with fluorescent phalloidin in aqueous solution. This shows the fluorescence image of a single actin filament. We can clearly see the Brownian motion of the individual actin filament. And this technique has allowed us to observe the sliding movement of single actin filament on myosin molecule. Myosin molecule extracted from muscle were fixed on the glass surface, and then we applied the fluorescent labeled actin filament with ATP. ATP is an energy, chemical energy source. And then we can see the sliding movement of a single actin filament along the myosin molecule like this. So this means that we can directly observe the muscle contraction at the molecular level. And this technique used to directly observe the rotation of ATP synthesizer is very famous. This is a very famous movie. And Noji-san and Kinoshita-san and so on. And next we develop a method for manipulation of the single actin filament for force measurement by a uh, micro needle. This shows the manipulation of the actin filament. This is actin filament. 
this micro needle. This show the force measurement for breaking the actin filament. Okay. <laughs> so we use this method to determine the force caused by a single myosin molecule, as shown here. For this, we have developed a technology for measurement of the displacement or bending of this micro needle with one nanometer accuracy. Then finally, we found that the force by myosin molecule is two piconewton. And Jim Spudich and his colleague have used the uh, laser trap and the nanometry. So they showed the, the manipulation of laser. And then they also succeeded in measurement of the force by single myosin molecule. And the next single molecule imaging, as you know well, the, the pioneer work on single molecule imaging was done by Professor W. Moyner, who won the Nobel Prize last year. But the, he observed the single molecule in the solid. So after that, the many chemists, the physicists, tried to observe a single fluorophore in aqueous solution to apply this technique to, for biology. But they're not successful because the fluorescence intensity and stability are greatly decreased in aqueous solution by collision of the water molecule and ionized oxygen. Furthermore, the background noise due to Raman scattering, the water molecule, dust, and so on. So the, we have used the TAF total internal reflection microscopy and the, made a big care of the optics. And then finally, uh, we have demonstrated that the single fluorophore can be seen in aqueous solution. And then we have demo this show that the uh, single fluorophore in aqueous solution. And then we have demonstrated that this technique can be applied for biology, such as enzymatic reaction. In this case is the enzymatic reaction cycle by myosin molecule. The flickering of the fluorescence intensity corresponds to the individual ATP turnover events by individual myosin molecule. And the movement of the molecular motor kinesin, this show the, the, show the movement of a single kinesin molecule along. Why? That's okay. So, like that. And also the uh, signaling, cell signaling in living cells. And ion channel and the DNA protein interaction and the conformation of change of the biomolecule by flat. I would like to. Uh, show that one model, a decent model, example. Uh, this show the movement of the myosin-5. Myosin-5 is a not a muscle myosin. Myosin-5 is a molecular motor that transports the organella in the cell. And we can see the movement of myosin-5, single myosin molecule on actin filament. And we, next, we <laughs> label that two head of the myosin molecule with different colors dyes, and then we observe the movement of these head with uh, accuracy of one nanometer, the microsecond, then we found that the myosin five move along actin filament. Like this, by using the Brownian motion. By using these single molecule detection techniques, we have measured the movement of the myosin molecule in detail. The two ends of the actin filament are trapped, attached to the optical trapped piece, and actin filament was brought into contact with single myosin molecule fixed on the glass surface. And the force by myosin head was determined by measuring the displacement of this micro with 
one nanometer accuracy. And the ATP turnover event was measured by using this fluorescent ATP analog and single molecule imaging technique. The upper trace indicates the mechanical events, lower trace indicates ATP turnover events. And here, the ATP binds to the myosin molecule, the myosin molecule dissociates from the actin filament, the force returns to the zero level, and then energized myosin molecule rebinds to the actin filament to generate the displacement of the force, and then the products were released. And the next, we try to resolve the rising phase of the displacement. So then we found that the displacement does not occur abruptly, but instead in a stepwise fashion. The step size is 5.5 nanometer, and sometimes the machine undergo undergoes a backward step. And we f confirmed that the each displacement corresponds to one ATP cycle. So these 5.5 nanometer steps are not coupled to the ATP tunnel events, not energized by chemical energy. So this is Brownian motion. So 5.5 nanometer step, or 5 nanometer 5, 5 nanometer 5, 5 nanometer 5 nanometer, it, the distance between active molecules, so that the, this result suggests that the myosin head works on active monomers by Brownian step, like this. So the conventional model supports the deterministic model, probably based on the analogy to man-made machine. So like this. But we have proposed the Brownian step model, like this, which is a unique mechanism using some of the noise essentially different from artificial machine. The recently, we have shown by using the modeling or the simulation that the Brownian step successfully explain the force velocity or efficiency velocity relationships and the response to quick length change or quick force change. That is, the Brownian step are essential for adaptive force generation of the muscle. This argument is not our original, because the more than 50 years ago, Andrew Huxley, Nobel Prize winner, argued that the Brownian ratchet or Brownian step are essential for explaining the adaptive or flexible force generation of the muscle. In that sense, we just provide experimental evidence for his argument. So, biological molecular machine does not overcome, but rather use the Brownian motion or fluctuation. The molecular machine can thus operate at energy as low as thermal noise with high efficiency. But the operations are stochastic and ambiguous. So, this nature is negative for man-made machine, but this nature is essential for the autonomy or the flexibility or adaptivity of the biological machines. This is essentially different from artificial machines. So to explain this, we have proposed a Brownian search or fluctuation search and the catch mechanism. In this model, the Brownian step corresponds to the process of the search for the best position by try and error. And we have found that the machine molecule has a strain sensor. And by using strain sensor, my machine had stopped the Brownian motion depending on the condition. So this action corresponds to the catch or decision. So next, we examined if the Brownian step of the myosin molecules are essential for adaptive heartbeat or a more complicated muscle system. But the heart contained a huge number of machine molecules in very complicated structure. So we need a huge scale computation. So we use 10 petaflops supercomputer K of Riken. This computer was number one all over the world 
2011, but not now, maybe for something like that. Anyway, we use this computer. And we also use the UT Heart simulator developed by Hisada and his colleagues. And the, a member of the Washio did the, this simulation mainly. So I will show you the movie. This is a simulation of the human heart that has been performed by a supercomputer. We broke down the heart into 170,000 little tetrahedrons and modeled it, combining various pieces of knowledge from physics, engineering, medicine, and physiology under a method known as the finite element method. Let's slow down its movement and take a closer look. This model calculates the heart's movement and even other details such as energy consumption at each part of the heart. Furthermore, it takes into consideration not only the heart surface, but also the variation in the thickness of the cardiac muscle and inner structure. The heart has flaps to prevent blood from flowing backwards. In between the left atrium and ventricle is the mitral valve. And in between the left ventricle and aorta is the aortic valve. The simulation calculates the intricate flow of blood and the movement of the valves that work together. This coupled system can be seen from various angles. In this heart simulation, muscle fiber that decides the direction and strength of the contraction are represented by tetrahedrons. The actual heart is also composed of thin fibers of muscle tangled together. Now let's take a look at the cross section. The model is colored according to the direction of the muscle fiber. You can see that the fibers twist from the outside of the heart to the inside. This allows more blood to be pushed to the whole body by creating a twisting movement inwards when the heart contracts. If we color the muscle fiber according to the grade of its contraction, we can see that the grade varies depending on the location. Now let's zoom into the muscle fibers of the outside, middle and inside of the heart Slow it down and take a look. Muscle fibers have a structure known as the sarcomere, and this creates contraction. The thin fiber is the actin filament. The thick fiber is the myosin filament. Myosin molecules protrude from the myosin filament. The myosin molecules stick to the actin filament and perform a power stroke to contract the sarcomere. This causes the whole heart to contract. This power stroke movement does not happen randomly, but has the quality of affecting surrounding myosin molecules to do the same. This quality, known as cooperativity, is important in understanding how the heart beats. This advanced heart simulation has already stepped outside of the research stage in areas such as surgery, where we can now predict the patient's outcome. Application of the technology in clinical practice is expected to bring a new paradigm to medicine. So, the, uh, this is a result, the Brownian step model, this is still preliminary, but the Brownian step model can successfully explain work for blood eject ejection, ATP conception, total ejection, and efficiency. But the deterministic model was not so much successful. And the sharpness heart was also successfully explained by the Brownian step sharpness of the heartbeat, especially the expansion is very important for the function of the uh, heart. And this expansion is successfully explained by this model. So, the still preliminary, but the, our results strongly indicate that the Brownian step myosin molecule are essential for adaptive, not only the muscle, but also the heart beat. So, I have, so <laughs> this is almost a joke. The, our Japanese emperor was highly impressed by research and he awarded me the imperial award. So this is the emperor of the Japan. Okay, that is 
the I consumed only 20 minutes, so I have more 20 minutes, so I would like to talk about the uh, human brain. That's okay. This is not the molecule. So the, we have studied the mechanism of the perception of the hidden figure. The, we have studied the process of consciousness or perception of this hidden figure. Due to lack of the information, you cannot immediately perceive this hidden figure, but you watch this figure for a while, you come to perceive. That's what it is. Zaira, Professor Zaira, what is this? Oh, so it's a very easy one. <laughs> so, so we have studied the process from here to here. Please enjoy. I have a little bit of um, time, so please enjoy. So what is this? If you can perceive, please right hand. Okay, this is Pengin. This is uh, e easiest. This is a horse. So this. No? Okay. Okay. So your brain state undergoes large fluctuation. <laughs> you can so immediately perceive any hidden figures. So what is this? Yes. And finally this. And then the, we analyze the perception time in detail, and we finally found that the perception time is obtained by this equation. That is the Boltzmann equation. So apparently the process of the consciousness, the perception is the same as chemical reaction. So this result suggests that our brain states undergo the fluctuation under the threshold, and by chance, this fluctuation beyond the threshold, flushing take place. So the person whose brain state fluctuation is large, like him, can very rapidly perceive hidden figures, but the person whose brain state fluctuation is very small cannot perceive any hidden figures. So next, what's happened? in this state. So we use functional MRI to measure the brain activity. Finally, I will ask, I will talk about the role of the fluctuation. <laughs> so the, if we show this movie, we can get the brain activity like that by functional MRI. And the next, my colleague of CNET have developed a method for decoding of the brain information from the brain activity. So if we show this, when we show this clip, and then we measure the brain activity, and by analyzing the brain activity, we can reconstitute the clip. Very good. Elephant is a little difficult, but the <laughs> but the human face is uh, very good. So then, by using this this technique, we observed what the person thinking before flushing. And we found that human brain undergo the fluctuating search for the best option from the various, in this case, the categories. And depending, according to the st stimulus information, the memory, the experience, 
they can make flash or choose the one best option. So this process is quite similar to that of the myosin, don't you think so? So finally, I would like to talk about the Neymar Albert. The, this is the, my colleague of the, this institute. This is Neymar. So. I have more. 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, the Japanese, but this. Onaji Spain League no Senshi to Hikak Suruto, Neymar, Hidari Gawani, Akai Bubunga, Oku Mirade. Sono Kotoa, Nanio, Yimi Surunoka. Nagane Asrito no no, Kenkyu Stekita, Naito H. Sanwa, Kokoni. ネイマールの変幻自在なプレーの秘密が隠されているという。そうですね。まさにこれはエキスパートの難だと思います。左の脳には複雑な体の動きを司る大事な機能がある。ネイマールのサノを別の角度から見る。まず。点滅した部分で状況に応じたいくつかのプレーを準備する。次にその中からベストのプレーを選び出す。そして実行へ。so the I'm sorry very rough discussion for this specialist of the brain but the I will try to uh, analyze uh, this data now this result indicates that the Neymar's brain can evoke much more choices than other players and then the his brain undergo the fluctuation, very rapid fluctuation search for the best choice. And then depending on the condition, he can make the quick selection, quick decision for of the best <coughs> choice. So again, this process is quite similar to that of the myosin molecule. <laughs> you don't agree? <laughs> so I believe that the, uh, this is the fractal structure of the function, not only the structure, but of the function. So our result suggests that the common principle, fluctuation search of the catch mechanism, works from molecule to human brain. So we expressed by this principle by simple equation, range by equation, including the activity. And by using this activity, we try to control the complex artificial robot. So Japanese, so anyway. The conventional method it's difficult to control such a complicated robot, but by using our principle, um, probably successful or useful. Also, the, uh, recently, the uh, information, the amount of information is increased day by day. So, a uh, huge amount of energy will uh, need to control the network system. Now, not so much serious, but in the future, that energy is a very serious problem. So we have to find a good method to control the complex network system with low efficiency and low energy cost. This is just a simulation. We applied our principle to control the uh, complex network system. Then we found that the, we can decrease that energy by hundred times, a thousand times. So my dream is to cause a paradigm shift in engineering by 
revolution through fusion of engineering and life science. Thank you very much for your attention. Nice. Are there any questions, Professor? Yes. Sure. Yes, I think so. I don't think they'll hear you in the back. Trying to make uh, my own. You're on. Yes. Uh, trying to make the analogy between the chemical fluctuations and the conceptual fluctuations you're, you're creating. Um, I mean, in, in, in the chemistry issues, the, 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 fast, the fluctuations, of course, are that have to be trapped by some process that, that, that can recognize them, and then another binding reaction has to occur, which is stable enough so that the binding free energy you, you lose by trapping an unlikely fluctuation is not, uh, uh, is not so great that it completely dissociates right away. But you also need a, I mean, so if the idea is that, that a good soccer player has many more, visualizes many more things during the same time as somebody else, what is the trapping mechanism that you imagine that, that, that does something about this? So that is a really uh, important and a difficult question. I believe that the chemical trapping of the chemical reaction corresponds to the decision making in the brain. So that the, um, how human brain make decision is a really uh, difficult, <laughs> but we are starting that point. But the, anyway, we can just say that the uh, Neymar can make very quickly uh, de make decision compared with other people. So the uh, I'm sorry, I cannot <laughs> answer that question, but that is very important. So now we are studying that one. common mechanism for everybody? But, mm -hmm. <laughs> so difficult, but in the case of the molecular, that is a the random Brownian motion, but in the case of the fluctuation of the brain, that the spontaneous fluctuation are caused by using the energy, so that the, that the fluctuation should be not random. That is the, uh, what shall I say, has a, some special uh, characteristic, so that the, I don't know, uh, what is the difference between the random fluctuation and the uh, human brain state fluctuation? But the, we are now analyzing that point. Up there, can you get her the microphone, please? Yeah, okay, that's better. I think what you are oh. talking about is what we call imagination, okay? Who? That's me here. Ah. Uh -huh. It's what we call imagination, and I think there was a much more interesting case to study than the football player. That's musicians who improvise. It's a much more interesting case, because one theme asks for another one. And this is a, in terms of relationship between imagination states, it is much more interesting than soccer playing. <laughs> so I cannot that means also I, I'm not much interested in soccer. Okay. That don't, it's, okay, thank you for the comment. I think it's, I mean, what, what you're asking in a way is if you looked at his, if the soccer player's brain and then gave him tasks to imagine, would it be the same parts that he would be doing decision making in, in the brain? And I, I think, you know, we know where the centers of the decision making are in the brain, but th this is actually looking at where the knowledge is being accessed in the cortex, and that's a little bit different. Okay, so, uh, but there, we had a question right here. Should be on. I'll, okay. Yeah, I was wondering, um, because it appears that these fluctuations are not conscious. Like, is it possible to affect them by will, like trying to make them more efficient? By will? Practice. You mean, can you practice to be more fluctuating? Yeah, so that's the, of course, the magnesium contains many factors. So that's the, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question now. <laughs> you have to answer the question I mean, about the molecule. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was wondering if it's like a completely uh, unconscious process that will happen if you just look at the picture, for example, that it will happen then, or if you affect it by, if you want to be fast, will yeah. it make you faster? So the, uh, co the rate of the consciousness should, be, should depend on the many factors, the experience and the evil and something like that. But the, at least we can say that we, uh, the, the uh, perception of the uh, hidden figure, we get the fairly uh, beautiful result, not much uh, variance. So, so yes, so that the usually uh, we measure the, uh, some function of the human, you know, the human has a big individuality, so that the data should diverse very largely. So, but in this case, fortunately, not much diverse, so that the, we can get uh, such a you know, beautiful uh, explanation to explain the perception. Right. Very interesting, thank you. Up in the back with the microphone, yeah. Curate your one, what estimate is for the brain activity? As if I understood you correctly, you measure mainly the heat, and that is in principle not what we, we're supposed to use our energy on. So my experience when thinking a lot is that I lose a lot of weight, much, much more than what you would expect with one watt. Do you have a comment to that? Yeah, that is a big argument. So that the uh, one word means that the difference between the while thinking and the relaxed or the anesthesia. So that is, I don't know what's happened in the brain in a relaxed state. So the people recently, this is a big argument now. That is the default form mode fluctuation. So the the unconsciousness process is very uh, still. Uh, what shall I say? Brain work something during the unconscious, unconscious state and the unconsciousness, I think. So, that's okay. <laughs> right here with the microphone, yes. You notice like um, uh, any uh, activities that like take uh, less energy, like for example, you had the fo football player that made uh, uh, choices like what he was supposed to do, but uh, is there like processes that take a lot less energy because there are less options? Are there processes that take a lot less energy? Are you saying are, are, are there processes that take less energy because they're not as energetic in terms of the body? Or, or I'm not sure I understand either. Uh, I was more thinking like because there were less options with less, uh, what what? You, less, less op options, like what you can do, like uh, alternatives. Less options. Yeah, okay. yeah. Fewer options. Oh, so things that take so things that take a lot of options. Do they take more energy than things that take fewer options? Yes, but the, even if we think something deeply, the energy cost is not much different from one watt. So that I believe that, of course, the Neymar evoked many kinds of motion pattern during the play, but I believe that he does not use so much energy. But he can, so that process does not consume so much energy, even if uh, we uh, think many options. But the, um, and the, what shall I say, the, uh, not a second class player cannot evoke so much uh, motion pattern, and then and it, it takes a long time to select the best one from such a small number of the options. That is a bad prayer. But the neighbor can evoke many motion patterns, and also he can make a decision or make selection very quickly. So that is the difference between the uh, Neymar and the other second class player. Okay, we're going to end. And there's a discussion at the end. So please, it seems that there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, I'll just, just add, the for the discussion <laughs> at the end of the day, okay, what, what I want you to think about is, and I think this relates to your question about imagination and, or a comment about imagination in the back. What if you took a Nobel Prize winner? What if you took one of these guys or well, women and put them in there and said, Think of five different options for your next experiment. 
would that flash the same things and how much? Think about that, okay? Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. <laughs>